Retinal Rounds, episode number 147, Epiretinal Proliferation. While typically associated with lamellar macular holes, full thickness macular holes can also be associated with epiretinal proliferation. Epiretinal proliferation is different from an ERM in that it is thicker and is generally non-contractile. So what do we do with this tissue when peeling ILM for full thickness macular holes? Do we peel it off? Should we leave it in place? These are the questions confronted by Dr. Vincent Laglaise from Poitiers, France, who demonstrates a technique for management of epiretinal proliferation associated with a full thickness macular hole. Let's see how he manages this tissue, and we want to thank Dr. Laglaise for sharing this case. So you can see here the preoperative OCT demonstrating a full thickness macular hole with a minimum linear diameter of 488 microns. The macular hole index is greater than 0.5, there is an elevated cuff and perifoveal cystoid changes, features all associated with a higher likelihood of macular hole closure. But if you look carefully at the inner surface of the retina adjacent to the hole, you'll see a thickened layer with medium reflectivity, which represents epiretinal proliferation. This tissue is unlike an ERM in that it is continuous with the underlying ILM, does not appear to be exerting traction in the form of striae, and appears to extend especially on the nasal aspect of the hole towards the inner layers of the retina. Let's see what Dr. Laglaise does with this tissue during peeling. Okay, you can see that the three uh, trocars are in place, and now Dr. Laglaise is gonna start by performing a core vitrectomy. Now we saw in the OCT that there appeared to be a posterior vitreous detachment, and you can see here that he is uh, removing the vitreous over the optic nerve and extending the shaving 360 degrees. Now once the vitrectomy is completed, you can see that the vitreous cutter is being used here uh, to reflux tissue blue over the posterior pole. Of course, this is going to be used to stain the ILM. Now uh, we're getting a higher magnification view here. The uh, tissue blue is being removed, and you can see that there's some patchy staining of the ILM. Of course, the parts of the ILM are going to be blocked from staining due to the presence of this epiretinal proliferation that's located a little bit more centrally. And so uh, the best area of staining here appears to be in this temporal aspect of the macula. And so Dr. Laglaise is going to try to fracture the ILM in this location using a pinch and peel technique. So you can see here that uh, he has gently elevated a strip of the ILM there. Uh, sometimes these little petechial hemorrhages can form uh, as a consequence of fracturing the ILM or even just peeling the ILM. So we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, to make sure that it doesn't expand during the course of the case. So you can see once the ILM is fractured, now Dr. Laglaise is going to extend the peeling of the ILM supra uh, temporally, and now is going to be pulling a little bit more centrally to elevate not only the ILM, but also the epiretinal proliferation. And that uh, peeling is going to extend more centrally up to the edge of the, um, of the uh, macular hole. And you can see that this tissue has a sort of a spongy, um, sort of thickened uh, characteristic to it, which is very typical for uh, epimacular proliferation. And you can see he's extended the peeling up to the, uh, up to the edge of the macular hole, but he's not actually removed that epiretinal proliferation. And we'll, we'll talk about, uh, towards the end of the case, why this particular approach appears to be better than actually completely removing the epiretinal tissue. So you can see here this peel is being extended 360 degrees around the uh, macular hole that epi epiretinal tissue, that epiretinal proliferation is being elevated and is being pulled uh, towards the center of the macular hole, but is not being amputated, not being completely removed. Um, and now some additional peeling of the underlying ILM is being extended uh, beyond uh, the, the edge of that epiretinal proliferation. So uh, getting as much ILM uh, removed as possible, I think here, to try to encourage uh, closure of this macular hole. You can see here some of that ILM that's been stained lightly with uh, tissue blue. Now he's gonna go ahead and um, uh, reflux a little bit more tissue blue just to uh, better uh, visualize where any residual ILM elements are present. And using the vitreous cutter, you can see here he's not only going to remove the, uh, the tissue blue that's in the, in the posterior pole, but he's also going to trim some of this epiretinal uh, proliferation tissue, but he's not going to completely amputate it, especially from the edges of the macular hole. So now using intraoperative OCT, you can see uh, that sort of uh, crown-like uh, elevation at the edge of the macular hole, and that's that residual epiretinal proliferation. Uh, so that's been amputated, but not completely removed from the edge. And now you can see the postoperative outcome 
a very nice closure of the macular hole. You can see here some attenuation of both the ELM and the ellipsoid zone layer, especially in the uh, foveal area, and that may limit the patient's postoperative visual outcome, but this is not an uncommon finding in patients who have epiretinal proliferation. So here's some take home points. Epiretinal proliferation was initially described as a thickened ERM, but it is different from a traditional ERM in many respects. On OCT, it appears thicker with medium reflectivity and is continuous with the underlying ILM, whereas ERMs tend to be hyper-reflective on OCT, they're thinner and may be associated with retinal striae, suggesting a contractile property. Uh, and there can be associated gaps between the ERM and the underlying ILM. Now, while most commonly seen in association with lamellar macular holes, epiretinal proliferation can also be seen in association with full thickness macular holes. And histologic studies have shown some associated glial cells, especially Mueller cells, as well as hyalocytes and RPE cells. The tissue is non-contractile, as uh, you can appreciate from the surgical video, and appears yellow with spongy characteristics intraoperatively. Now, macular holes associated with epiretinal proliferation are generally associated with worse visual prognosis compared to those without epiretinal proliferation. For those who want to read more on the topic, two articles I would recommend reading include the one on the left by Ji Sung San and colleagues published in the Korean Journal of Ophthalmology in 2016, and the one on the right by J. Wan Choi and colleagues in Nature Scientific Reports in 2024. Now, their studies suggest that complete removal of epiretinal proliferation may yield worse visual outcomes. And rather, they recommend careful elevation of the epiretinal proliferation with trimming of that tissue and gentle inversion of the epiretinal tissue over the macular hole, which appears to yield superior visual outcomes. And you can see that's exactly the technique that was beautifully demonstrated by Dr. LaGlaze. And we want to thank him again for sharing this case and for giving us all an opportunity to learn more about the management of epiretinal proliferation. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.